horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Listen, see if you can recognize the famous voice on this record. I'm a happy mouse, and I ought to be. Oh, you let me in your house and watch me on TV. Right, that's just a little bit of a record of Mickey Mouse singing Happy Mouse. To get this record for your very own, just look for the special Wheaties box with the record on the front. You see, it's not just a picture of a record you'll find there. It's an actual Walt Disney Mouseketeer record that's part of the Wheaties box. Just cut it out with scissors, punch out the center hole, and it's ready to be played on any 78 RPM manual control record player. Ready to be played again and again. There are eight different Mouseketeer records you can get, all featuring famous Walt Disney characters. There's Donald Duck's song, Goofy singing It's Fun to Whistle, and many, many more. Just look for the special Wheaties Mouseketeer record package at your grocer's. The records won't cost you one penny extra with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, we come. Are you Silver? Abigail Appleton had come from Boston to keep house for her brother Jonathan and his motherless daughter Jane. Jonathan Appleton was the town banker in Grey Rock, and Abigail considered that this fact put her at the top of the social ladder in Grey Rock, much to the amusement of most of the townspeople, who gave little or no thought to so-called social class distinction. In Abigail's opinion, the one person who was at the absolute bottom of her self-made social scale was Ma Jenkins, rough, gun-toting, but popular owner of the town cafe. Jane Appleton was walking toward her father's bank as Jerry Jenkins left his buckboard at the hitch rack and headed for the general store. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, hello there, Jerry. I wondered if you'd come to town today. I came in for some supplies. Mom was ordered at the store. We've been busy at the ranch the last few days. Oh, uh, Jerry... My aunt had another run-in with your mother today. She, mm-hmm. she came home furious a short time ago. Uh-oh. It's too bad they ever had to meet. Mom means Oh, well. I know. In fact, like everyone else, I'm attracted to her because she's so real. Aunt Abigail just doesn't realize how ridiculous her ideas are out here in this rough pioneer country. Her ideas aren't any help to us either, Jane. She sure wouldn't like it if she knew we were meeting each other. Yes, I know. She... Well, she has heard rumors and already spoke to me about it, Jerry. Oh? Uh-huh. What did she say? She said I was to keep away from you. I wouldn't promise, so Aunt Abigail said she was going to speak to Dad about it. What do you think he'll say? Well, he rather likes you, Jerry, but... Well, Aunt Abigail has him under her thumb so that he gives in on most everything. By thunder, I don't care what either of them say. We're still... No, Jerry, you just don't understand. Look, Dad is all I have, and whatever he says, I... Well, that's it. You will agree with them that I'm not good enough for you. And you'll be willing to give me up. Oh, no way, Jerry. I didn't mean... forget it. I guess maybe you're filled with those local society ideas like your aunt. I reckon our going together is a mistake after all. Bye. I'll be getting along. Oh, Jerry, wait. I... Oh, what's the use? Some distance north of Grey Rock, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the valley trail that led to the town. As he carefully scanned the surrounding hills, the masked man was saying, I don't like the looks of things, Tonto. You think the Comanche go on warpath, Kimasabi? We've seen plenty of signs of unrest. There's another signal fire on that hill off to the left there. Ah, 
Signal fire, say, Chief Eagle Feather want powwow. Him calling all crimes to village near North End Valley. Eagle Feather knows the garrison at Fort Stockton, but the low gray rock is greatly weakened. Colonel Blair took most of the regiment to quell an Apache uprising near Pecos. Oh, that right. Keep our eyes open and be ready to warn the settlers. Ah. Later we'll make camp. At dawn we'll head back toward Chief Eagle Feather's village and try to find out what's going on. Mon Feather! Ah. Ah. That evening, Ma Jenkins left the Gray Rock Cafe and rode to the ranch she owned a short way from town. As she entered the ranch house, her son Jerry came from his room with a small bundle of clothing. Hi, Mom. Hello, Jerry. Well, what's the bundle for? Oh, just a change of clothes. I, I figure I'm riding up to Pecos to work with Uncle Jed on his ranch for a while. Well, it was for. We have plenty for you to do right here on our own ranch. Oh, I want to get away for a while, that's all. Oh, <laughs> Must have had a spat with a certain girl named Jane Appleton. Is that it? Oh, it's not exactly a spat, Mom. That high pollutant man of hers told Jane she had to stop what? seeing him. You mean Abby Appleton doesn't think my boy is good enough for her niece, huh? Why, that ornery, snooty-nosed female. I'll go back to town right now. Oh, Mom, a... don't. There's no need to make things worse than they are. Well, I get plenty riled when I think of how she pulls that society stuff around Greyrock. Looking down her silly nose at hard-working, honest folk. Forget it, Mom. After a few weeks with Uncle Jed, I'll get used to not seeing Jane, and then I'll come back. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had camped for the night. At the first streak of dawn, they set out and rode back up the valley until they came fairly close to the place where Chief Eagle Feather had his village. Leaving their horses in a clump of trees nearby, the masked man and Indian went on foot to a bluff that overlooked the Comanche village in a hollow below. You can see the village from up here, Tonto. Ah. Chief Eagle Feather. There in circle. Old powwow. Look, Eagle Feather. Stand up. Give sign to listen. He's going to speak to the braves. Better hear what he says, Tonto. Ah, me listen close. Come on, get up, boy! Hey, hey, hey! Come here, Spade! Hey, Thunder! 
warn you. The Comanches are on the warpath. Get to the fort and hurry. Monsieur! Tahoe was the first to reach town. Quickly, the word was spread around the town, and a general exodus started toward Fort Stockton. But Abigail Appleton refused to be concerned when her brother Jonathan came to the house to get her to leave. Abigail! Why aren't you ready to leave? Nonsense, Jonathan. All this talk about Indians is ridiculous. We've been here three years and there's been no trouble. Maybe so, but there's plenty of trouble brewing now. I sent word to you half an hour ago to get things you wanted to take to the fort for you and Jane. Dad, what's all the excitement? Did you not tell you? The Indians are on the warpath. They're headed for Grey Rock. Oh, how awful. I sent the funds from the bank by wagon. Now, come on, let's get away from here. I refuse to leave my home in possession, Jonathan. These other people in town are easily thrown into panic. I expect that of the lower classes, but you and Jane certainly don't have Everybody it. Everybody's leaving. Get going, it'll be too late. Come on. He bought the news. I have a buckboard outside. I have the I... idea. I will take all this news. You have to the other side of town. Get out to the buckboard, quick. Oh, try out Abigail's fame. You and your father get going. I'll bring your aunt. Hurry, we'll have to make a run for it. Even now, we may be too late. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope the steer because he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his... Now to continue. The people of Grey Rock were hurrying from town upon receiving news that the Comanches were on the warpath. Jonathan Appleton was one of the last to leave. And rushing to his home, he found Abigail unwilling to go. Also, he found that she hadn't warned Jane of the impending doom. The Lone Ranger rushed in and ordered them to hurry. At that moment, the vanguard of the Indian tribe was heard, and Abigail fainted. Telling Jonathan and Jane to hurry out to the waiting buckboard, the Lone Ranger lifted Abigail in his arms and carried her outside. I'll put her in the back. I'll sit beside her. All right, Miss Rappleton. Get going. All right. Ho, 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 ho. Jane, you He's all right, Jerry. Be right behind them and cover them. Get going. Get up there. Get up. Come on. Stay be close. All right, let's go. Let's go. Get up. The buckboard raced along at top speed with the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Jerry riding behind. It was about an hour's ride to Fort Stockton, and finally they arrived without the mishap to find the stockade crowded with townsmen and settlers. As the buckboard came to a halt, the big gates closed behind it. Is this the last man you told me about? Yes, that's him, all right. Because of him, almost everybody in town got to the fort. This is just the beginning, Lieutenant. Those Comanches know the fort is understaffed. They'll head this way after they finish in town. If they do, we won't have much chance, I'm afraid. Don't let them get me. Don't hit me. I'll help King get her out into one of the cabins. Maybe you need go now. Use other trail north. Try to find Colonel Blair. All right, Toto, go ahead. I'll stay here and do what I can to help protect the fort. Ah, uh-huh. Miko, quick. Open the gates. Let that Indian through. <laughs> think he'll make it, mister? He will if anyone can. All right, let's get the people organized. It won't be long before the Comanches will be coming this way. The Lone Ranger worked with the lieutenant and the sheriff to organize the settlers so that they might help the small garrison of troopers to hold off the Comanche attack if and when it should come. Men were given guns and placed on the parapet, and the women were close by to reload as fast as the guns were fired. But there were two women who didn't take the positions expected of them. 
One was Abigail Appleton, who was cowering in one of the cabins. The other was Maud Jenkins, who stood at one of the openings beside her son, Jerry, with a rifle in her hand, ready and waiting. Here they come, let them have them. the Comanches was a ferocious one. The masked figure of the Lone Ranger was seemingly everywhere at once, encouraging the men, watching for flaming arrows and directing in first aid. All the other side, hurry, keep shooting! What's that fire? On the fucking brigade, get the fire out! For an hour, the battle waxed hot and heavy. Then gradually, the Comanches withdrew to a ridge beyond the fort, and the defenders of the stockade had a breathing spell. Yeah, looks like we drove them off, Miss Sack. Well, they'll be back stronger than ever in a little while, Sheriff. I've been through this many times before. Another attack might mean our finish. We can't hold out against that many redskins. That's right, I'm afraid. I was left with only a few soldiers at the fort, and a good many settlers have been wounded already. Let's make a quick check right now, Lieutenant. All right. The lieutenant and the masked man found Maud and her son, Jerry, kneeling beside the prone figure of Jonathan Appleton. Is he badly wounded? I'm afraid so, mister. It's Jonathan Appleton, the town bank. Oh, where's the girl, Jane? She went to get her Aunt Abby. I reckon Abby's too weak to come out of the cabin she's been staying in. She's been scared, Steve. Hey, come now, man. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, are you all right? I'm done for, Abigail. You'll, you'll have to take over the bank funds and get the bank running again. Yeah. Yes, I'll do it, Jonathan. Jane and I together. Major. He's gone. Oh. Yes. The eyes of the small group went from Jonathan to Jane and Abigail. They expected Jane to take her father's death bravely, but they were sure Abigail would faint or go into hysterics. The Lone Ranger took a step toward Abigail, but she held out her hand to keep him back. Then she spoke. No, thank you, mister. I won't need assistance. The group didn't realize that a gradual change had come over Abigail from the moment that the raid had started. The group looked in amazement for a quiet moment. Then Abigail looked up, a grim smile on her face, as Maud spoke. Abby, I mean, Abigail, I'm sorry. Maud, Jonathan took a gun and fought just like the others. I'm taking his gun and I'm going to stand up there beside you, Maud. We'll show those savages the people of Grey Rock stand together. Well, I'll beat you. Oh, but Aunt Abigail, you might hate you. People like to call me Abby, Jane. So you do the same. And they have no time for tears. Neither has an Appleton. Lieutenant! Lieutenant! What's the trouble? We can see them from the watchtower! The regiment is returning! Oh, thank heaven! Oh, Lieutenant, yes. The colonel has no way of knowing the Comanches are waiting behind that ridge. The troopers will ride into an ambush. Great day! We've got to warn them somehow. Yes, there's only one way. I'll get my horse. You mean you're going to ride out there? Why, it'll be suicide. I'll have to take that chance. Come on, Lieutenant. Get the men ready to open the front gate for me. Come on, men. Come on, men. A short time later, the Lone Ranger was ready to leave. The crowd watched breathlessly as the big gates were slowly swung open. Good luck, mister! Hope you make it! One thing more! The man should see him! They're shooting at him! He's riding like wildfire! He's got to make it! He's just got it! They haven't hit him yet, Mom. He'll make it. The Nazis didn't get him, so they're going to attack before he reaches the regiment. Get your rifles, everybody! <laughs> Once more, the defenders of the fort saw waves of frenzied redskins coming over the ridge and toward the stockade. Maud glanced at Abigail beside her and was surprised to see how she handled a rifle. Why, Abby, you sure handled that rifle as if you knew how. My father made me learn how to handle a rifle, Maud, but then I didn't consider it ladylike. Did you see that? Took a feather right off that savage's head. At last, you're becoming a Westerner, Abby. <laughs>
regiment, the Comanches were beaten and dispersed. The settlers welcomed the troopers with open arms as they rode through the big gates. Lord Abbey, Jane, and Jerry stood in a group by themselves, watching. <laughs> I see Tano and a masked man out there. If it hadn't been for them, we've all been massacred before we could have reached the fort. Here, and the fort would have fallen to the Comanches if the masked hombre hadn't gone to warn the regiment about the ambush. Because of all that's happened, I've found out what a fool I've been, Maud. We all have to stick together as equals out here if we hope to survive. Well, Aunt Abigail. Not Abigail. Call me Aunt Abby. I like it. Well, uh, Aunt Abby, does this mean you won't object to Jerry and me? Jane, to... there's no reason why you shouldn't marry the son of one of my good friends. <laughs> that is, if Maud approves. Why, man alive, Abby. You know... I always did say you never could tell a case by its fortune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, Jane. I guess we all owe a lot to my masked friend and the Indian. Oh, look, there they go riding away. Oh, they didn't come inside the fort. Say, who in thunder is that tall, good-looking hombre with the mask on anyway, Jerry? I thought you knew, Mom. He's the Lone Ranger. Oh, <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.